because I'm not used to reading right to left. That might take me a second to get used to. Hi everyone, my name is Brittany from Brittany Loves Reading and today I'm going to be trying a new genre of literature. I did this a couple months ago with KU. I decided to try out KU and KU Romance. And if you know what that did to my reading, you know that it completely changed what I'm reading because I love KU Romances now. I'm gonna try something new in this vlog. At the beginning of the year, I did the 12 recommends challenge on Instagram where you put up, give me 12 recommendations and your friends can give you book recommendations that you have to read throughout the year. Meredith from Reading with Mare gave me the book Fruit Basket, which is a manga. I have never read manga. Never. I, since joining BookTube, have so many friends that read manga books. They look so interesting and I want to give it a try. I do read graphic novels, so it's probably not going to be that far removed, but it is definitely different and I'm excited to dive into the genre. I asked for some recommendations and I will be reading three or four. I can't remember how many mangas I've gotten from my library at this point. Mangas in this book and trying out manga for the first time. And I figured since Meredith was the first person to recommend me a manga, I might as well start with the manga Merit recommended and that is Fruit Basket. So this is a family with an ancient curse and the girl who will change their lives forever. Toru Honda was an orphan with no place to go until the mysterious Soma family offered her a place to call home. Now her ordinary high school life is turned upside down as she's introduced to the Soma's world of magical curses and family secrets. So I don't think any of these will take me that long to read because they are manga, but they might take me longer than a graphic novel just because I'm not used to reading right to left. That might take me a second to get used to. It's definitely going to take me a second to get used to. I have finished Fruit Basket. This was actually very, very cute. It took me a good chapter to get used to reading right to left. The whole first chapter, I was very confused. Only because I think it just took my brain a minute to get used to it. And also knowing how to read left to right and up and down properly. And then there were times where I'd read the wrong frame, realize that it was the wrong frame and have to like fix it. After the first chapter, that happened less and less, and by the end, I was doing pretty well. So I think I've got it for the next two books on this vlog, but we'll see. At the beginning of this book, we find Toro Honda, who is basically living in a tent. Her parents have died, and she went to live with her grandfather. Her grandfather, though, is now renovating his home and asks her to go live with a friend, but she doesn't want to put out any of her friends, so she starts living in a tent. She ends up living in a tent on the Suma family's land, and eventually some of the Suma family find her on this land and realize that she's in a dangerous situation and take her back to their home. Once in their home, she finds out that this family actually has this magical ability to turn into the animals of the Zodiac. That is what we follow is just kind of the building up of what is, I'm pretty sure, a fairly long manga series. Just learning about this magic that this family has, where they can turn into the signs of the Zodiac and the animals that correspond, as well as Toro Honda just meeting the family, becoming kind of a part of the family in her own way. I ended up giving this four stars. I had a really great time, especially once I got used to the style of manga. And I'm very excited to try another one right after this. And the next one I'm very excited about because it's vampires. And I don't know, I, I love a good vampire fantasy and I'm sure I'll like it in manga form as well. That being said, I will be reading Millennium Snow Volume 1. This follows Chayuki Matsuka. And she was born with a heart condition and her doctors say that she won't live until the next snow. Toya is an 18 year old vampire who hates blood and refuses to make the traditional partnership with a human whose life giving blood would keep them both alive for a thousand years. And obviously these two meet and I don't know what happens after they meet, 
but it follows this girl and this vampire. Like I said, I love vampire fantasy, so I have a feeling that I'm going to really enjoy this. I have really high hopes. And especially now that I've gotten used to how to read manga, I think I've gotten used to it. So I have finished Millennium Snow. This was actually really cute. It was definitely an intro again to this long manga series, just like Fruits Basket was, but I still really enjoyed dipping my toe in. I definitely think that I have a handle on finally reading right to left, which is exciting. I didn't have as many struggles physically reading this as I maybe did with Fruit Basket, just because I didn't know what I was doing then. And I kept going to the wrong dialogue box and making mistakes the first time. But this time I feel like I had it under control. This one I'm going to give three stars because I don't feel like I really got to know the characters that much in this book because it is very much an intro to what I know is a very long manga series. Basically, this follows Chayuki and Chayuki has a heart condition and is very close to dying. She's 17 years old and every year she just hopes to reach the first snowfall. Her doctors have made it very clear that it is unlikely she is going to reach the first snowfall this year. She is very, very ill. She meets Toya. Toya is a vampire and has the ability to basically make one person his partner. And by giving his blood to that partner, they can live the thousand years that he is also going to live so that he's not alone. He does not want to curse anyone with the ability to live for a thousand years. He sees it as a curse more than a blessing and does not want to give it to someone. Obviously, Chayuki wants to live and thinks that this would be a great way to do it and they form a friendship. I won't go into the, all of the details because I think you should read it. But I had a good time. I definitely will be continuing with this manga series because I'm interested to see what happens. Because like I said, this was very much just an introduction to the characters and kind of like this system of the partners with a thousand years and how Toya feels about being a vampire and about Chayuki's illness. We don't really dive into the story much in this first book. That being said, we're going to move on to the next manga for this vlog. And I had to put this manga in this video because it is around everywhere. Everyone is talking about this manga series and I absolutely needed to read it for this video. I felt like it just had to be a part of it. And that is Spy Family. This has taken over booktube the love of Spy Family and I need to know what all the fuss is about. I know nothing about this book going into it other than that it follows a family of spies, which I believe the title kind of gives away and makes kind of obvious. So I'm going to go read this and I will check in with you when I'm done. We have our first five star of this vlog. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. I love this so much. I enjoyed my time immensely and cannot wait to pick up book two. I've already put it on order because I want to continue this so desperately. This follows a spy called Twilight. Twilight is a world famous spy and is amazing at his job. His newest task has to get him close to a target and the way that his agency has decided to do this is get him to enroll his child in the school that somehow connects him to this person. There is just one problem. Twilight has no family. He does not have a child and within a week needs to get an entire family to work on his mission. He goes to an orphanage and adopts a little girl named Anya and Anya is everything. Anya is life. We love Anya. Little does he know that the little girl he adopts is not just the cutest thing in the world because she is. She is also a telepath. He thinks he can get away with just adopting a child and not making a whole family because he can just say that his wife died. So during the entrance process to this school that they need to get Anya in, they realize that this school will actually not accept them unless they are like a perfect family unit. And he realizes he needs a wife. He starts looking around for a wife and one day while shopping finds your, but again, little does he know, that Yor is actually an assassin. She's a city worker secretary by day and an assassin by night. 
So now we have a fake family that is a spy, an assassin, and a telepath. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. They try to start the entrance process into the school and we see the beginning of that as well. So we kind of in this book just see the family being formed and their entrance process into this new school. That is really all that we see in this book, but that's all we needed to see. It was a great introduction of how this family came to be and who each of the characters are. These characters are fantastic. They are utterly fantastic. And I love every single one of them, but I have to say Anya, the little girl, by far my favorite. She is just great. I'm gonna read one more manga in this vlog and that is The Promised Neverland. This book follows Emma, Norman, and Ray, and they are the brightest kids at Grace Field House Orphanage. And under the care of the woman they refer to as mom, all the kids have enjoyed a comfortable life. Good food, clean clothes, and the perfect environment to learn. What more could an orphan ask for? One day though, Emma and Norman uncover the dark truth of the outside world they are forbidden from seeing. That is what the back of the book says. So that is obviously the synopsis. I'm going to go read this and I will check in with you very, very soon. So I have finished The Promised Neverland. This was just okay for me. I'm going to give this three stars. I think the reason was the story was not super interesting to me. It's not a story that really captivated my attention. We follow these children in this orphanage and slowly they realize this is not actually an orphanage and there's something very sinister going on. I won't go into what that is because obviously it could be considered a spoiler, so I will refrain. The main issue with this though for me was that these children are very young. It does follow a set of children in an orphanage and there is only one adult in this book. The oldest children in the orphanage are 11. There are three 11 year olds and we follow basically the three of them as they discover what's going on and while they try to figure out what they're going to do about it. Because it followed so many young children, this read very young to me and it just wasn't my cup of tea compared to the other mangas I've read in this series. It wasn't bad necessarily, it just wasn't great. So I ended up giving it three stars. This is the last book for this vlog. We have read four mangas ranging in ratings from three all the way up to five with Spy X Family. Loved that one, need to continue that immediately. And I think this has been a really successful trying a new genre of literature. I definitely want to read more manga now and I feel like I have the ability to do it. I feel like I now have got my mind around reading right to left and I feel very on top of it. The more I went through it, the easier that was and the less I really had to think about it and the more I could just sink into the stories. That being said, if there's a manga that you'd like to see me try, please put it down in the comments for maybe a future manga video or even just a reading vlog where a manga would work. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.